All right, at stock settings, the 3080 is getting about 86.96 mega hash, and it's pulling about 300 watts. It is going high on the on the temperature, on the memory junction temperature. I had to stop because on this one tutorial they were showing to use one millimeter silicone. However, when I measured the offset, I found that it was really half a millimeter. And if you look at the previous section of this video, um, it does show that they didn't even use silicone, they use uh, thermal base in this region. and this is why it's very important when you do this type of things you don't go off of tutorials on YouTube or Reddit or any, anywhere else. You should understand why they cho chose certain thicknesses um, and if you just do what they had suggested, like if I had done that, this, would have been, this board would have been warped <laughs> quite a bit. So just make sure um, you get the right information or you understand how they determine the thicknesses. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that show how to determine the thicknesses. Uh, the best thing to do is get a pair of calipers. For the VRAM, I had two different thermal pads I had used. So the first time was with this version here that I purchased from Amazon. Uh, this one has a one 1.5 uh, thermal conductivity to it. So for those who are not really familiar with that terminology, basically what it means is when you have thermal, thermal energy, it gets transmitted into temperature onto any surfaces and then the thermal conductivity is basically what travels through the item um, and it's all based on thickness, the, the material properties, uh, the temperature, ambient temperature. Um, this is all from thermodynamics, so I won't go into all of it, <laughs> uh, but it is something that they show in thermodynamics, and it's it's kind of a pain. But um, basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find. Uh, part that has or thermal pads that have a high thermal conductivity to it meaning that it allows for more heat to dissipate through the silicone so this one is 1.1.5 1. 1. this one that I purchased is 12.8 which would allow the temperature to dissipate quicker on the VRAM so let's let's go ahead and switch it out now. All right, so we got the EVGA B stock hooked up now. It's repadded with the 1.5 um, thermal conductivity on the VRAM right now. We are running it on ETH uh, TVX miner, and these are the overclocks I'm using. 60% um, for power. 60% for power. Uh, negative 200 for the memory or the core clock and a thousand for the memory So this is repadded and we're seeing a hundred We are seeing a hundred Celsius on the VRAM using a low thermal conductivity silicone on it we are also seeing about uh, 97.6 mega hash for this and uh, 200 and about 30 watts of power being used on it. So what 
I'm gonna try next now is using a higher thermal conductivity on this, the, the 12.8, and see if that brings down the temperature. Uh, this has been running for about five minutes right now. Um, so let's see how this improves the performance of this GPU. And the amb ambient temperature in where I am right now is about 70, two degrees right now I'm not sure what that is in Celsius but um, that has a big effect on thermal conductivity um, so let's let's see what happens when I switch this over all right so I got the heatsink off the card now and I'm going to remove these thermal pads here because these are the 1.5 uh, thermal conductivity ones and we're going to switch them out with the 12.8 and see how that does over time all right there we go let's switch them out with the 12.8 so let's see how this does all right there we go so we got the thermal pads back in with the, the 12.8 uh, thermal conductivity pads in there we're getting, well, using the same overclock as before, negative 200 on the core and 1,000 on the memory. We're getting about 96.88 mega hash, and our VRAM temperature is 72. Hardware info is showing it at 74 as max, and we've been we've been running this for about 20 minutes, and it's it's staying pretty steady there um, so it's not hitting 100 as before and we're getting yeah pretty good mega hash on this beat stock 97.47 all right so let's bring this up higher i'm bringing this up to 1400 i saw this on uh red fox's uh video so i want to give it a try and see where where this goes uh if this gets up to 100 mega hash I've seen, yeah, other people's videos show that it hits 100, but uh, I've never experienced it, so this will be pretty exciting. Let's get the 100. 99.12. It's almost there. Come on. Oh, come on. It's taking forever. There we go. 100.71 mega hash on a B stock 3080 for the win three. Not bad, not bad at all. Those overclocks work out pretty good. And the thermal pads are holding up. We're still maintaining at 74 uh, degrees Celsius at the memory junction. Uh, we don't see any thermal throttling according to hardware info. And we're actually even getting 101 point one six mega hash now on Ethereum um, TFX miner, and we yeah here's hardware info just confirming this, no thermal throttling, and we got the memory te temperature, memory junction temperature at 74, 72, it, the max it's hit is 76 degrees Celsius, so this is this is working out pretty well. All right, so overall, guys, make sure you choose the correct thermal pads. You could go a little lower. Uh, I don't recommend it for for how long you'll be running this. It's better off um, going as high as you can on the thermal conductivity. If you choose ones that are lower, that are not really intended for this type of heat, then you're going to see uh, some issues over time. Um, remember those lower value ones are really meant for items or chipsets that are gonna be hitting a lower temperature. But we know that the VRAM on these cards hit pretty high, so we want something, we want a thermal conductivity pretty high rating on it, which is 12.8 or even higher. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. Um, I'll try to get it back to you as soon as possible, but 
Yeah, thanks guys. Take care.